Hello, a very warm welcome. My name is Jamie Owen, and if you're just joining us, a very warm welcome to you and our second session of uh, this morning. When a business needs external funding to start up or scale up, many of us will uh, seek investment from a business angel. We've all heard the words. What does it mean? In a business angel, uh, there is the chance to access capital, connections perhaps, and of course, sector experience. So getting the right investor fit is absolutely key to this story. The right backing from the right business angel can, of course, propel your business to new levels. We have a fascinating panel of angel experts here to uh, discuss this and other related angel topics in much more detail. So it's a very great pleasure to introduce to you First of all, in no particular order, the wonderful Jenny Tooth, OBE, uh, an established speaker with extensive experience of the world of angel investing. Jenny is CEO of uh, the UK Business Angels Association, uh, the trade body, I suppose, for angel and early stage investing, representing over, I think it's about uh, 18,000 investors all around the UK. Very warm welcome to you. Lovely to see you. Uh, in the studio, let me introduce you to my colleagues here. Rodney Appiah needs no introduction, a former investment banker, non-executive director and venture capital investor. He's currently uh, chairman of uh, Cornerstone Partners, uh, the leading UK angel network backing uh, exceptional black and diverse founders. And finally, last but not least, Steve Holt is here, uh, the director of Angels Invest Wales, the largest angel network in Wales and part of the Development Bank of Wales Group. So our panel, welcome to all of them uh, and welcome to you. And if you missed the earlier session, uh, I should explain to you this is live. You're perfectly welcome to get in touch and ask questions and uh, we'd be delighted to hear from you. So let's first of all begin with um, the role of uh, business angels. Um, let's start, I think, with Jenny here, uh, the CEO of uh, the UK Business Angels Association. What is the role um, of a business angel exactly? Bear in mind, many people watching this session uh, won't know exactly what it is that you guys are about. Are you there to just diversify the investment portfolio? Tell us more. No, thank you very much. And apologies, I can't join you today, but a real pleasure to be here. It's important to bear in mind um, that a business angel is someone who is actually using their own money. They're usually business people, professionals, people who've got a background often in building and growing businesses themselves, but who are passionate about entrepreneurs. But they are using their own money. It's not someone else's money, which may be if you're, if you're a VC uh, fund manager. Um, what the most important thing to bear in mind about an, an angel is that they bring huge amounts of experience, of knowledge um, and expertise that can really help you build and grow those early stages of your business. They are there as aligned to entrepreneurs. They're, they're not there to uh, force an exit. They're there very much to support you in your growth journey and that early nurturing. Um, as well as building significant traction that builds your business towards going further for further growth, growth funding. Um, angels often use their, their own money in small amounts as individuals, but when working as a syndicate, um, they can often bring between about 100,000 and even 1.5 million in an early stage deal. And angels follow on. They give more money to entrepreneurs um, as you build and grow your business to help you move towards that next phase as you scale your business. So those are very important considerations. I think you had a little bit earlier that often people are looking for like a two to five year exit scenario if you're taking equity. But angels are different. They're very much there to support you to grow at your own pace. And they're often in there for the long term. So it, we call it patient capital because they'll stay in there often for up to about 12 years until you exit. But angels do want a return. And that's something that you do need to, to bear in mind. They are looking for growth and they are looking for returns. Um, so I hope that's given you a little bit of an, an overview of really 
how to how to find an angel we'll talk about a little bit later on but also thinking about what the profile of an angel is it's you know they are there they're on your side and they're generally a great individual you make it sound almost religious. Jenny, thank you very much for that. Uh, don't go away. We'll be coming back to you uh, much more uh, in the session. Um, let's talk about being investor ready. Rodney, um, you will often hear businesses being described, well, we heard it earlier on in the first session, about being investor ready when um, uh, dealing with business angels. But as an investor, what does that mean exactly? What does investor ready look like from your perspective? Yeah, and I think it's a term that's that's banded around quite quite a bit, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. I think from my perspective, it's about providing a very clear articulation of a team, a plan, and an idea that would benefit from external capital to grow quickly. And I think being able to do that and have all those ingredients in place to give investors and any source of funding um, the, cap the confidence that that business can grow with their support and with their capital it is absolutely critical. And so what does that break down into in, in sort of practical terms? It, it's things such as, you know, being able to articulate your story very clearly through a, through a pitch deck, for example, or being able to put together a series of financials that present a credible, but exciting and, and uh, impressive growth story over the next five to seven years in terms of financials. It could bring, uh, it could uh, sort of provide some detail around the market that you're seeking to disrupt. It could provide some, some um, insight into the technology or the IP that you're seeking to, to defend and, and to develop over a period of time. So it's about telling that story and, and really investing is about telling stories and, and telling stories that are believable, telling stories that are compelling, telling stories that are, are credible. And, and that's what it means to be investment ready. If you can articulate that story to a provider of capital you're much, much more likely to, to get a, a positive response and, and lead on a, on a positive journey. And can I ask you, this week of all weeks, I wonder does a business's uh, environmental uh, and social impact also play a part here? I, I think it does, you know, particularly in, in light of, of COP26. Um, you know, investors, both, both angel investors like, like myself, Steve and, and, and Jenny, but also institutional investors, fund managers, ESG is right at the top of the agenda, environmental, social and governance issues and, and looking for businesses that can um, provide both a profit element but also an impact element is becoming increasingly important and being able to articulate how your business provides um, more impact to a broader set of stakeholders is, is critical. And there's lots of different areas in which you can do that. Can you do that in, in the sense of providing sustainability with regards to your business. Is your business sustainable in terms of how it sources products, how it develops um, value over a period of time, in terms of how it engages with its broader stakeholder um, units rather than just, just the, the shareholders. Um, I think on the, on the sort of the, the other issues, the social issues, particularly with, with, with respect to Cornstone Partners, I think this increased focus around diversity and the desire to promote a more diverse and representative community both of angel investors but also of founders is, is critically important. If you look at the, the stats over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, you know, less than 2% of venture capital funding went to female founders and less than 1% of venture capital funding went to uh, f uh, ethnic minority founders. And, and that clearly can't be right in such a dynamic and cosmopolitan um, environment that we have in, in the UK. Um, where, we, where we celebrate immigration and, and, and the role it plays in terms of creating a dynamic economy. So I think all of these things are, are important um, considerations for investors. Um, you, the, the statistics you've just quoted will horrify uh, people watching. Um, and let's throw it back to you. Why is it so bad? There's a, there's a number of different issues that, that are at play, Jamie, and I think in many respects they're intersectional. So, so from the the founder perspective, there is a, a lack of social capital, particularly for, for female founders and ethnic minority founders. And, and by that, I mean uh, an awareness of the benefits of engaging with angel investors and venture capital investors. And so because of that lack of awareness, uh, there's a perception that, that that audience is not for them and that they're not best placed to help them support and grow their, their businesses. From the investment standpoint, we've got to do a better job in finding these companies. You know, they operate in slightly different networks to the networks that we're used to. We've got to be much more proactive in engaging with them, 
um, hosting events, educating the audiences around you know, the benefits of capital to help them accelerate and scale their, their, their businesses. And so I think those are the, those are the two, two, two main issues uh, that are at play. Let's uh, go back to Jenny briefly. I, I just want to ask you, how does being investor ready differ between a startup uh, and a scale up? Yeah, thank you. And by the way, we'll pick up on some of the points that Rodney made a little bit later on as well, I think, when we talk about some of kind of the myths and barriers around um, angel investing. But actually, when you're moving from being um, a startup to scaling, the first of all, I would want to say is everyone who goes for equity should be thinking about scaling. It should be kind of in your DNA when thinking of going for for an angel and equity investment, because that capacity to scale and building that into your early kind of thinking and strategy is, is fundamental. Really, when you're thinking about scaling your business and positioning yourself for that, for those bigger funds that, that will hopefully follow on once you've been successfully built those early phases of your business with angel, angel support, it's things like um, how you're going to start to grow your team, how you're going to build the skill set around your business so that you've got the right players, everything from marketing to, you know, to sales to, to, you know, to product development. Thinking that how you're going to build that those players in your team is very important. And, and thinking about leadership as well. If you're the if you're the founder or the or the CEO, how are you going to lead that team to make sure that you're you're ready for, for bigger growth? Other aspects are really about growing your customer base. You, as an angel, we're quite happy to invest in businesses that are pre-revenue and often don't have um, that. You know, often a large number of early customers. Sometimes just a, a lot of intent. But really, by this time, as you're scaling, you need to be thinking: Where can I really ex explore this and find a lot bigger base of customers? It could well be scaling your markets as well, looking at how you extend your markets, your market reach um, could be just outside your own region, but it could also be looking internationally. And also generally um, thinking about the kind of milestones of maybe product development or technology development so that you can really demonstrate that you have that capacity to really grow and extend your business. Um, you know, we're looking for, for growth, we're looking for returns, and that ability to really show that you're taking the milestones to scaling is quite fundamental. And as I said, it can't really start early enough. Um, so scaling should be kind of part of your, your general strategy when, when working with angels and looking generally at equity. Let's bring in Steve now, Steve Holt um, at Angels Invest Wales. I mean, you deal with a lot of uh, uh, businesses looking for investment. Where can they go? Where should they go to get help to become investor ready? Hmm. First of all, to echo Jenny and Rodney's comments, uh, investor readiness, much used term, but it's about being prepared, really. Um, obviously, my focus is Wales, and I, and I feel in Wales there's, there's quite a lot of support, actually. I mean, we, we would naturally refer... Uh, early stage businesses to Business Wales, who have a suite, a suite of support tools really that can take businesses from the startup phase through to the scale up phase. Um, we would also very quickly look to get the businesses in front of angels. Angels are very good at, at providing advice. The advice is sometimes worth more than the money. Uh, so we, we would try to make that connection fairly early and the complexion of the angel network in Wales really is, is, is aligned to that because a lot of our angels have been on that previous journey, self-made people who've made money buying and selling companies and are keen to put that advice back. So you have to make a first impression, you know, you never get a chance, you know, a second chance to make a first impression. So sometimes you only have very few bites at it. So being prepared, uh, is is key, but getting in front of the angel to get the advice is is also key. And uh, you know, aside from that, we we would naturally in the network introduce entrepreneurs and early stage businesses to other companies that have been on the journey and have learnt sometimes the hard way, you know, the ups and downs uh, ups and downs of the journey. So there are many 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 avenues, and I, I feel in Wales is quite a lot of support around. And, and once they are investor ready, mm -hmm. uh, where can they meet? Where should they meet and talk to potential investors? Well, I would say this, wouldn't I? But they should come to us at <laughs> Angels Invest Wales. I mean, we're a, we're a one-stop shop uh, for making that connection. We have a platform where they can showcase their opportunity. Um, or we can do 
one-to-one -one introductions or small group introductions, as Jenny said earlier, the, the, the trend very much at the moment is syndicate investing. So we, we are keen to put businesses when they are ready or when you know, we've sort of quality checked them, if you like, for the readiness in front of investors as soon as possible. I just want to talk to all, all of you about getting the right investor fit because that's crucial uh, in, on this, isn't it? I mean, Steve, Angels Invest Wales acts as a, a network for, for bringing together <coughs> investors and, and businesses. So just how important is it to get the right fit between business and angel? Oh, crucial. Uh, I mean, we push it back to the business very often to say, well, look, what type of investor uh, are you looking for? What type of angel are you looking for? Because it's a given that they're looking for funding. So the, so the angel or the investor will know that when they sit in front of the business. But I think the personal, personal chemistry is absolutely vital. And it works, bo it works both ways because, you know, to, to get the, the right investor on board for the right part of the journey that the business is on, is, is the number one, number one question. And we always push it back to the business. What are you looking to achieve? Uh, maybe you know you need an investor that is that is experienced in the market that you're looking to penetrate. They've got the battle scars. They've been there. They've been successful, and that sort of factor and that and that and that sort of issue comes into play really alongside the funding. They they know the investor is is keen to invest and they and they're keen to get the funding. But it's it's the experience of the journey that they're on. I think Jenny Tooth, uh, getting the right investor fit. Your thoughts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Agree, agree with Steve. Um, it's, it's really important that you do your homework. And, you know, just as angels do due diligence on you as a business, hmm. you absolutely need to do the same to them. Um, you need their and you need that added value that, that Steve uh, mentioned, and that's just as valuable as the money. So actually understanding what they've invested in before, um, what kind of entrepreneurs, what sectors they've invested in, um, and actually not being afraid to talk to other entrepreneurs who've had who've had money from from those angels is also um, perfectly fine. You it, because it's really a marriage, you know, it's very long term the relationship. So you need to get it right. So so taking time to check each other out actually spending a lot of time meeting and talking with each other is is really important but not being able to afraid to ask some key questions about their own ambitions their own objectives in investing in you uh, and making sure that you thoroughly know each other before you go go into that and that's true if it's an individual angel or if it's a syndicate especially who's going to lead in investing in you and who's going to spend time in your business understanding you know their motivations and their skills is really important. Rodney, just a perspective from you as an investor on getting the right investor fit. Yeah, I think I think there are sort of three key considerations from, from my perspective. The first is absolutely agreeing with Steve on chemistry. Chemistry is vitally important. Um, it's a long journey, you know, as, as Jenny mentioned, it could be up to 12 years and you want to make sure that the investors that you're inviting to your cap table are individuals that you, that are gonna be happy you, people that you want to work with during the good times, but also during the very challenging times. And there will be some ups and downs through that, through that journey as you're growing your business, as there is invariably in early stage businesses, because it's never ever a smooth linear ride. Um, I think the second thing um, that's really important is the terms that come with the capital. And I think that's often overlooked. And what, what I mean by the terms, I'm talking about the legal framework by which that investment is being made and to what extent uh, the investors are looking for certain types of protections, certain types of um, sort of levels of involvement at certain stages during your journey of the business. And depending on the type of fund that you are, you might want to have a lot of involvement. In, in other words, you might want a mentor or a coach, or you might want very little involvement and actually you want someone who's quite passive um, because you're very clear about what you're trying to achieve and, and over what time frame. Um, and then I think the final thing is, and probably the most important thing, but but we don't really spend a lot of time talking about it, is, is what value add does that investor bring to the table? Um, there's no point getting the capital and having a really good fit with a person if they can't actually help you to grow your business over the next five to 10 years. I mean, that's really important. So can they do it in a very practical way? Can they introduce you to customers? Can they make um, the appropriate introductions? Can they um, identify problems within your business or share some shared learnings? All of these things are, are critical when you're assessing the right investor fit. And all of this for the first time entrant to all of this sounds totally daunting. I mean, you know, we're, we're 
very British and very polite and we don't like these crunchy <laughs> kind of difficult meetings, do we? I mean, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Steve, I mean, what, what can businesses do to avoid getting the, the wrong investor on board? I mean, you just need to be frighteningly blunt and difficult, I suppose. I, I think so. I think there's, there's a certain mystique around angels as well. I think businesses, some businesses are very cautious of being introduced to a business angel. But I, I think when you show them the human face, um, all, all of that changes. It goes back to the same thing, is be, being prepared. I, I encourage the business to put themselves in the shoes of, of the investor and think, as Jenny said earlier, they're investing their money. You know, you're not giving a part of your company where you're selling a part of your company to, to the investor. So just put yourself in, in their shoes, be, be prepared and you know, be confident about your business as well uh, and enthusiasm. That's the number one thing that the angel looks for is that the entrepreneur is absolutely and super enthusiastic about their business because they're selling them the concept. Um, Rodney, what about businesses needing to do the research on the investors? You, d you do need to sort of dig, and dig, well, dig the dirt almost. Yeah, and I think Jenny made some great points earlier around, around how you go about doing that. I think the first thing is try to understand the thesis of the investor. And, and both angel investors as well as institutional investors will have a thesis. And by thesis, I mean uh, an approach to investing, you know, a theme to investing. They might decide they want to back female founders. They might decide they want to focus on a particular sector or vertical. They might decide that they want to focus on uh, businesses that address a particular problem that they think they have some, some insight into. So understanding that thesis is really important because um, that will greatly improve your chances of, of success in, t in terms of the engagement with that investor. I think the second thing is look at what they've invested in previously. You know, look at their portfolios, speak to some of those entrepreneurs and get a real life example of, of, of how that investor engages on a day to day or on a monthly or periodic basis with, with you as a founder. Um, because often the, the pitch that an investor provides is very different from the reality. And I say that as an angel investor. <laughs> so we should be very open and honest about that. And as, as founders, you really want to flush that out early, given the length of the, of the relationship. In some, some cases, it's longer than a marriage. So you've got to, you've got to do that homework. Um, and then I think the, the final thing to think about when you're, you're doing that research is you've got to be very mindful that there are different sources of capital. So angel investing is obviously one element of the way in which you can scale your business. But you can also find um, other sources of capital. You can work with government agencies like Innovate UK, for example, that can provide you with some funding to support the initial um, conception of your idea. You can engage with grant organisations. You can work with impact investors that care more about the impact and sustainability of your business rather than on the profits. And so understanding the full landscape is, is critical in understanding what's the appropriate type of capital for you and your business, given what you're trying to achieve. Jenny, this, this is in danger of um, sounding like a marriage guidance council conversation, <laughs> but I, I do want to ask you about that sense of the relationship, the alignment of where you're both going, business and angel, and the need to almost align uh, vision and goals. That's critical, otherwise this, this goes nowhere. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, that that uh, feeling alignment is is very strong. And that's especially important to angels, because, as I said, they're they're in there taking all the risks. Um, they're in there often for the long term. So you know, that that uh, that alignment and that sense of, of, of relationship and understanding each other's perspective is, is really important. And also so that you can go to the angel and ask for help. One of the big things you have to remember is your business may not always go well. So you need to be able to feel that you can actually go relatively early to the angel and say, look, you know, the cash flow is not going as well or the plan's not going so well. We're probably going to have to make some changes here. Um, I may even need to have some more money from you in due course or, or so on. So you need to feel you've got that, that kind of confidence. It's also worth bearing in mind, and this is really very important, that Often you get concerned when you're approaching angels, and many entrepreneurs say this, especially women entrepreneurs, that you're actually going to lose control, that in some way having an angel in your business means they're going to control your business um, and, and actually dictate what you're going to do. Firstly, from an equity point of view, you should never have an angel that takes a lot of equity in your business in that first stage. So when they're giving you capital, it, is, it should only be for a relatively small part of your business, 15 to 20 percent absolute max in those early stages. I often have entrepreneurs come to me 
and have having given away too much of their business in the early phase. So that's another evidence that, you know, you are aligned because, you know, they're not taking ownership of your business. They're not taking control. They're taking small amounts of capital. So that's really important to bear in mind. Um, and I think that, you know, that that actually goes through, I said, in terms of those that, that reporting, that giving progress, telling where things are going wrong and building that that trust between you as you go along. So for me, um, you know, it's not something to be concerned about. It's something to build on and make very positive uh, links with with your with your investors right from the start. Rodney, how, invo how involved do the businesses want to be? Sorry, Jamie, just in, in, in what context? In just in, in terms of the angel relationship, I mean, what are we yes. talking? If you're a first timer, you have no experience of this, you have no expectation, uh, no understanding of how it works. What are we looking at here in, in, in terms of involvement, both in, times, in terms of uh, percentage money, but also I'm thinking in terms of time. How much is your presence going to be felt? How much are you going to be there? How much are you going to be on the phone? What is normal? What is acceptable? Yes, completely understand. So, so it varies dramatically, and I think. Um, particularly during those formative stages of building your, out your business, you probably are looking for a more involved angel investor than, than not, um, because a passive investor doesn't really help you go to the next stage. And so what, is, what does that involvement look like? So to give you a, a very practical and live example, I will typically speak to my founders once a week. And um, you know, they've got my phone number on speed dial. They can speak to me during, during the, the late evening when I'm putting my son to bed. They can speak to me in the morning. And I think you wanna have that very close relationship. You want that angel investor to almost be an, an extension of your family. Like Samaritans almost. <laughs> yes, yes, almost. Because it, it, does get, it does get quite lonely being a founder. You know, being a founder, building a business, making sure that you can meet the payroll, that you can support you, the, the broader team. Does, do, do any of these people ever say, "Look, you know, get out of my life. You're just, you're just here too much." Do you? I mean, <laughs> do, 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 I, this is a serious question. Though. Do, does, does it ever happen where you're just in their faces too much, and it's too much? You just need to give people a bit of fresh air. It must happen. I think sometimes the relationship can break down, and often it breaks down during those critical moments where there's a lot of stress at play, there's a lot of value at play, and and um, it's very difficult to recover from that position. And so you, you are right to say that an angel investor needs to recognise when to intervene and when, when not to. And, and I think the thing that I always say is that fundamentally as an angel investor, particularly taking a minority stake of less than 10% in most cases, you're backing the team and you've got to have a lot of confidence that they know how to execute. You're there to be a cheerleader, to be a supportive but constructive ally, but ultimately you're backing them to deliver. Very diplomatic. I was hoping that you know <laughs> one of the three of you would come on. There must have been some instance where you've just been told, you know, we're changing the locks. Get lost. As I said, personal chemistry is the key, <laughs> is the key to this uh, marriage, as Jenny as Jenny calls it. But no, but on a, on a serious note, there is there is a fair amount of discussion at the very front end before you get into the legalities of, of the equity investing and the angel coming on board. So you'll know pretty quick if it's the right fit, I think, on, on personalities. Jenny, you'll know pretty f quickly if it's the right fit. Are, are you going to tell us uh, any of your horror stories? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to tell you my own personal horror story, perhaps. But what I will say is that there are times, actually, when you know the angels' perspective and it, particularly their thought of when things should happen will be different to yours as an entrepreneur. So, for example, you know, when are you going to start? You know, the next phase of your growth. Um, when are you maybe going to? And one of the biggest ones. When are you going to start positioning yourself for exit and for someone to buy you? That can often be on a very different level. To, to your own expectations where you think you've still got a long way to go to build and grow your business. So one of the big things about that is making sure you totally understand the end game as well as the start game when you are going into investment with angels to make sure that you do have the same views on, on things like exits, growth, next phase of funding, because that's where massive tensions um, can, can lie. Um, and, and it can be vice versa for you as an entrepreneur. You're keen to move on, you're keen to go for growth, you're keen to go for next phase of funding or keen to go for an exit. Um, and actually the, the, the angels can, can hold you back. So those are very important areas to, to iron out um, along the way, but can cause huge tensions. 
Well, we're going to move on. I've, I've decided you've all failed my television audition <laughs> for uh, my six-part series on the dark side of uh, <laughs> business angels. You've all been very professional and far too discreet. Let's move on next to um, barriers. I want to talk here about the, the common barriers for uh, businesses accessing angel investment. Jenny, let's start with you. Let's, let's talk about barriers. What are they and what are your experiences? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are interesting barriers, and some of them actually um, Rodney's touched on too, because one of the barriers often <clears throat> is actually, you know, having access to angels at all. And um, this is why, you know, we need, we need you know, angel invest whales and, 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 and networks and groups, because actually one of the hardest things often is to actually get accepted to pitch and present in front of in front of angels. So one of the things you have to make sure is that you you know we've talked about investment ready, but that you've also got something that is really interesting, exciting, innovative, disruptive, something that you can say this is really worth you talking talking to me about and me showing you what this is about. And frequently um, people um, entrepreneurs forget to really show the excitement in their business that really gets them over the line. So I think, you know, getting through there is very, very important and getting their attention. The second thing um, to bear in mind, and it's really quite common, particularly among uh, women uh, uh, that I have noticed, and Rodney will also say the same among black and ethnic minority and other underrepresented groups, it's often very, very hard to actually position your business so that you can actually ask them for the right amount of money as well from, from angels. Um, our experience is that often entrepreneurs do not ask for all the money they need because they're actually concerned as to whether or not they should even be asking, you know, asking for money. You know, it's like it's a difficult thing to do. If you're coming up there saying, give me money for my business. And quite often, entrepreneurs underestimate how much money they need and, and think sort of almost out of kindness, it's best to ask for less. Always ask for all the money you need. Always make sure you, you're doing that. And the main thing is also is to really show all that you've achieved. I frequently find um, entrepreneurs um, coming towards me and, and, and especially those who may be a little bit less confident in actually not putting all that they've achieved out there. They've often got done some amazing things to get as far as asking for angel investment, but actually are quite tentative about that and quite reticent. So always set your ambitions out there and, you know, and absolutely make sure that you can really position your business to show both, both how you're exciting, you're scalable, but also why angel investment is the right, is the right thing, right thing for you. So, so those are many issues. And then the other part of it is remembering that it is a risky area you are asking people to take a risk in you so actually being quite flexible in in how you negotiate and approach this in terms of how you see the value of your business um, is, is also very important so there i think that some of the kind of barriers that when things go wrong is because there have been some misalignment of some of those um points along the way so you know getting in front of the angels and um, you know making the best of your opportunity and then also making sure you're kind of flexible and, and open, but do not under ask for your funding. Rodney, um, thoughts on barriers. What, what barriers are there out there for both um, businesses and investors? Yeah, I think I think for businesses, one of the biggest barriers is is finding angel investors. I think you know angel investing is, can be quite opaque. It can be quite an unstructured, and obviously that's why having organisations like Angel Invest Wales, the UK Business Angels Association, you know, highlighting the great work of angel syndicates up and down the country is absolutely um, vitally important for, for businesses and founders that are looking for that first stage of funding. So I think that's, that's really, really important. I think the other thing that's, that, that we find um, often crops up, particularly with regards to um, underrepresented founders, black and diverse founders, is getting access to angel investors to actually have that opportunity to pitch their idea. And often um, there's this term called a warm introduction. So having a warm introduction. And, and what that means in essence is that um, having a, a, an introduction to an investor that's been pre-qualified by someone that they know. That's what a warm introduction is. And that's so important because investors will see lots and lots of opportunities every day. You know, at Cornerstone, we see between 350 and 400 opportunities a, a year. Uh, I'm sure Angel Invest Wells are, are similarly inundated. And so investors need to have a, a, almost a shortcut in, in which they can, they can filter through those opportunities. And warm introductions provide, provide that shortcut. And so 
we do a lot of work of supporting underrepresented founders in trying to identify uh, you know, the best ways to reach the, the appropriate investors for them. So I think that's a, that's a real barrier that we're trying to, trying to address by just trying to be a bit more open, a bit more accessible, giving them access to our contact details. Um, probably the, the final sort of barrier is, is just the nature of networks and how networks work. You know, we find in our experience that, that investors will tend to um, invest into businesses that they know and businesses they, that they understand. And so it's really it, critical that we try to encourage more diversity with regards to, to networks. We encourage more diversity in, in teams. You know, if you hire more female investors, you tend to back more female founders. And similarly, if you hire more ethnic minority investors, you tend to back more ethnic minority-led founded businesses. So the, these are some areas that, that, that are important to, to touch on and talk about. And it's a whole day's discussion, isn't it? It's sad to, uh, be, uh, to have to ram it into a couple of minutes because it's, uh, it's so important and so fascinating. But as ever on these conversations, when you have a fascinating bunch of people, you, you run out of time and the clock is very much against us. So my sincere thanks to uh, all our panelists who've taken part in this part of the day. Uh, you've been listening to uh, Jenny Tooth, the CEO of uh, British Angels Association, uh, Steve Holt, the director of Angels Invest Wales, uh, Rodney Appiah, the early stage investor. You've been great company and thank you so much for your expertise uh, and your time here today.